Okay, my friends, really serious, serious stuff. This is Seeker, one of my favorite places that I watch all their stuff. Scientists are in a race against time and Earth's rotation. Well, what's up with Earth's rotation? Well, listen, what to, here's what's going on. Earth is really spinning faster than it has before. It's spinning faster, or just a smidge, not a lot. But what happens is when you ha collect mass in the center of a spinning object, it gets faster and faster. And you see that in these ice skaters. Now, why, listen to this. And they, they talk about plate tectonics and all this stuff. Well, we're going to see exactly why this is being caused. Just like an ice skater draws in their arms to spin faster, anything that moves mass closer to Earth's axis speeds up the planet's spin, making the all right, making it go a little faster because the mass is con concussing closer to the center of the, the spin point. Now, what would do that? Why would the Earth could mass move closer? This is something called compression, a concussion. The, the compression means that you force something in tighter and tighter. Well, what would do that? We're spinning through all of these are particles. Every single ton in the, every single bit of the universe is saturated with light, which we don't see. It's, this is, it's all over the place here, too. You don't see it. Well, it's out there, too. You don't see it. Well, they know it's there. It's solar wind. It's, it's the electrons that we're getting using in our solar panels. It's heat. It's light. It's everything. And they spin off the sun and they impact with our gases that are out there because they are magnetic particles, too. Just like the particles are coming, they're magnetic particles. They bank into each other and cause a glow. That's where your glow is created. And then it cascades down to the earth. Those particles keep going, coming down further and further until they bash into the earth and create heat and plants and all that stuff. But it's 2,700 degrees out here where we're scrubbing our gases. Now, why would that matter? Who cares? Well, I care. Because what it's doing is as we continue to expand the gases, burning fossil fuels and all the things that make gases out of solid things, what we just did was increase the envelope around our planet. So we're still spinning in the same stuff. We're still getting hit with the same stuff. We're still being scrubbed the same way. We're, but it's forcing everything to condense. That's condensation. That means the matter's you know, zoom and now we're going to take off. Well, you know, I mean, it's slowly, but we're going to spin faster and faster. They don't understand why it's happening. Because they think that this is a vacuum. It is not a vacuum. We know it's not a vacuum. This, they call it the um, uh, solar wind. There's all kind of particles. There's all kind of particles coming out of here. But they're very tiny. You don't really see them. But they're tiny little particles. Plus, there's all the light from the sun and the stars. That's all particles. Now, over here, it's millions of degrees out here at the corona, where the sun itself is scrubbing through the particles in space. And as the sun scrubs through those particles, the corona goes to millions. The sun's only 7,000. That's the only way it can happen is to, this to increase like that. It should be going into coldness. And eventually it gets kind of cold because there's just not enough extra forced electrons. But there is a ton of extra forced electrons coming at us as we force our electrons out and make our balloon blow up bigger and bigger. We just not, we have to get to free energy. And I can do this right now. We can do it with Gibbs free energy. I'm going to do another one today because I showed the Gibbs free energy, which is nothing more than creating a Venturi and literally atomically fission of light. Light particles are the smallest particles we know of. And if you can f make them go into fission, which means split them, then when they come back together, there's a ton of energy. And we can easily do it, and we can control it, and it cannot run away, and it's clean, and you can put it in a box, and nothing will come out of that box. And all that box will do is attract more electrons into it to, to, to continue to feed the electrons that we're going to store and use to drive whatever we drive. There is just a ton of these extra particles around just waiting to go in where they're wanted. If they're wanted in the correct manner, and we can do that with the Venturi because we're splitting them apart. When they come back together, they they need we're taking the part away that would have come back together. So we're not going to get that slap. We're going to bring this down into a battery or drive a wheel or something. 
All right, so there's a little engineering to do, but I don't think very much. It's almost like absorbing it with a, a solar panel, because we're just doing nothing more than spraying raw electrons with no dark matter attached to them. And right now, 100% of everything has dark matter until it goes through a venturi like I showed you, or will show you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this for today because there's, I got a, one coming up where we're going to go through all of this stuff here, little toys I got here to show you how all the interactions work. And then we're going to, because I just did a video on UFO propulsion systems, and I think they must be using this. There's no other way they're going to get this kind of energy to do the kind of things they do. And plus, when you look at them, they're always glowing white or black around, white around the black or black around the white which is this here, these black and white particles. Now, that's what I'm taking away from this. It, these, it, this must be involved somehow, because this is, um, this is raw electron energy. And this is where we're going to harvest our energy to get free energy. And it should be very simple, almost like a solar panel. Gibbs free energy, totally enclosed, not any possibility of running away, hurting anybody, non-polluting, free electron energy. Very simple, all right. But stick with me, because what, you get your kids, if you have any, or anybody that's interested in science whatsoever, to to follow this, because this is a whole new physics, and they know it's new, and they they realize it now, and they're coming around. And even well, let me just show you one last thing, which I've shown a bunch of times, I know, and I'm going to keep showing these kind of things over and over until it starts to get absorbed by the general population, because it's still being fought against desperately by people that have vested interests in not having this just, you know, very simple power available. In, in every realm, the teachers, the, the people that are, are supplying power, all these things, but this is good for everyone. This will start a whole new revolution on every level. People will become, come self-sufficient almost to a point where we can start to really help the earth instead of destroying it if we can get free energy with this and it's a self-enclosed system we're not going to blow our system up our, our atmosphere up and scrub and destroy our planet we're going to end up and everybody you know poverty and all that stuff should go away but we got to look at this in a real real serious way i know i'm i sound like a real you know, somewhere out in outer space guy, which I guess I am. <laughs> but this is just the way it is. If we don't really take something and make a big jump and a big leap, you're just going to fall over. Because we got jump, things to jump over right now that you can't, you can't just walk up to them and stand there and say, oh yeah, look at that. We're just going to all explode pretty soon. Have a nice day. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> I try. My, my son says, this is my dad. His name's Roger. He's a fixer. <laughs> he said that to a kid when he was about six years old. He walked up to him. I don't know why. We were in a store or something. It was the cutest thing I ever saw. But that's what I do. I, I fix things. I, that's what it was my whole life was about. <laughs> I was a field engineer. That's what I did. Something broke, I had to go fix it. And I'll tell you, things are broke now with every single aspect of humanity and the world and of physics and geography and geology. I don't know about geography, maybe they know where things are. <laughs> but we got a lot of work to do. So stick around with Mud Fossil University and um, let's try to get through this.